Hey, Andre, so it's pronounced right. Yeah, uh, Andre is like, you know, the Czech language is so like a bit <laughs> difficult, more difficult, so it's uh, right uh, pronunciation is Andre. Andre. So maybe you can call me on just on Andre. <laughs> you can call me just Andra. It's like... Andra uh, or Andre? Fine, that's like Andra, Andra, Andra. It's like between friends. Okay, yeah. Andra. Now, uh, the question is, what was your first Hello World? Ah, my first Hello World, like, uh, to be honest, I was like a little bit youngster, at least in the comparison with all the other guests that uh, I, I, I listen uh, to in your podcasts. I'm a regular uh, listener, at least uh, till time you, you started to publish uh, your show uh, so, so often that I'm not. Uh, not, not following all of them. Uh, so I started with, uh, programming like on, on high school with some courses of, uh, Turbo Pascal and then later on, uh, Visual Basic and Delphi. And yeah, at the time, um, I was just rather learning in some, some bigger project of mine, maybe it was some, uh, character generator for RPG, uh, like D and D like hey, cool. game, uh, in visual basic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you are youngster, um, you said, yeah. so, so uh, probably you are the only one who started with Hello World, you know, because, uh, as we started, um, I think there was no Hello World. So uh, at least the concept of Hello World was not known to me. <laughs> And uh, so you started at the high <laughs> I see. school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You started at the high school, uh, and uh, before that, you didn't have a computer, or you didn't, you know, did something with your computer. No, no, I, I, I've got my computer at like at the start of my high school. Yeah, that. Um, what was I, it? I was like uh, visiting my my friends uh, to, to play some games, uh, but yeah, the, my first computer was Pentium One Hundred, I think. Okay. And the machine of from your oh, that, friend was it also Pentium? Yeah, that, then we started with Atari, uh, some ah, we, okay. yeah, and then then that was like you know just playing games, maybe copying some uh, some like pro co programming code from some magazine to uh, like have some program, but that was nothing that I would call us learning uh, pro programming language and just copying text from magazines. Okay, so it was Atari 500? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. could be. But it's a like, larger Atari machine, right? So it was... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you are not that young, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that young, but uh, from perspective of starting a learning of, of uh, programming. Okay. No, and, uh, this this actually does not matter when you start. It's the only thing which matters. You have to enjoy it, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that's, um, that's true. So uh, then you uh, were forced to start programming at school. Uh, no, that that's something that I really enjoyed. So I was okay. uh, looking forward to 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 learn. So yeah, that yeah, as I said that uh, uh, started with some courses, but then I I learned for myself that Visual Basic uh, started with PHP, web design. Uh, some like, you know, HTML, CSS, uh, starting to learn uh, JavaScript. Um, yeah, that I enjoyed that, uh, this, this way. When was and, it? Which year? Uh, 2001, something like 2002. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. And, and, and in 2001, you did PHP and not Java. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The, the Java, I, 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 I got to, to Java just, uh, on university and that was uh you know that 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 was uh, that that language with the object orienting uh, paradigm that i was uh, like uh, really looking uh as a, some golden uh, golden thing that i should start to start to use um so yeah that i started on with java on university uh, i think that was bdk5 or something okay um, so already with annotations and not too much XML. So that's nice. Yeah. And you told me exactly. you, you created some RPG characters uh, for D&D, &D, um, right? Yeah, yeah, that in Visual Basic for Excel, I think. <laughs> okay. And what was it exactly? So was it your first uh, serious program you wrote? Uh, 
I I think that was something like a bigger uh, bigger thing that uh, before that yeah we had some like tries I don't know with my friends to to think things we were thinking like let's create some uh, game in 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 Turbo Pascal so I was I don't know trying to create some basic uh, uh, you know data structures in Turbo Pascal as uh, there there was no much no many libraries, uh, but that was just ne- never happened. So I was learning, um, but there was no outcome. Then with that, uh, I created a few like small websites in PHP on a high school for friends or for the game. Uh, no, not many more. Okay. And uh, what happens between, uh, you know, the or website phase and java so you did you implemented something serious or then you just started programming java in fact for for some really serious programming that was then java uh, the university and at the end i started to to, to i was hired for a job uh, for in um that was a company that uh, uh works on like uh, um a software for for warehouses that uh, that I uh, I learned mm-hmm. the J- enterprise Java and yeah and we we were using JBoss okay for point two I think yeah. as you saw Java the first time Java five at the university you liked that or what was your first very first impression um, yeah that was a little bit more complicated <laughs> than. than to, to working with PHP, I, I, even when I, my colleagues uh, don't like PHP in general, I think that I I, uh, I think that's uh, easy to use, and I, I have no like big objections <laughs> against PHP. Just that you need to be like care how how you program. Uh, maybe it's uh, a little bit more complicated to to do something debugging, refactoring, and etc. So, Java, but Java was like. Uh, that was nice, and I was really, I I was really enjoying that, and that was the reason why why I was looking for the job that the Java will be part. Okay. So what your what was your first uh, Java line of code? Was it public static void main or a server? Yeah, that uh, that was the public static main. Yeah, that was some uh, example from university. Okay, uh, where I started. And this was already complicated for you, or you said, "Okay, it's different but doable." Uh, no, that that just that you 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 needed to start to think about the objects, uh, and and Java was like you you needed to really create the objects for uh, or an object uh, before you can uh, start to write your main function. So you need you you needed to think about what's happening around uh, from that perspective. It, it was a little bit more, a bit more complicated, but uh, like. The, the the programming uh, paradigm was like time, you know, function. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you because I remember a discussion a few years ago that Java is hard to learn because of the public static void main. It is really mm-hmm. hard, you know, to get it. That uh, it has to start with that. And I thought about that. So yeah, this is true. But I mean, if you take it as given, and uh, you just you know you can get over it. I would say in a few hours. It's not like you know. Uh, it is impossible to grasp the idea, right? Yeah, that I, I agree with that. But yeah, from yeah, from the perspective of current like programming uh, hello world, then still the Java is not the <laughs> easiest way how to boot it to the programming language learning. I think, but yeah, I, I would but probably start really... with JavaScript in browser properly, right? You can open mm, the console yeah. and do something, and this is immediately visible. And you see, you know, the the different the difference immediately in the browser. So this could be an interesting. Thing. Yeah, agree. I I recently I I learned a little bit of Go Golang, mm-hmm. and that's examples of how the the tutorial on the web is really as well. Great, just you can type and you can see what's happening. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at the university you did some uh, Java programming and uh, did. Have you have you have you um did you did you implemented something in your leisure with Java or just you know the serious university stuff? About the uh, in Java, I was really uh, doing some just 
university uh, projects. So there, there was some some small small things, but uh, to be honest, I really like started some like real uh, real world projects in 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 my job. Okay, so what was your the most exciting project or the most interesting project at the university you did then? Uh, yeah, that that was. I meanwhile, I still I was still like in, in Java, if you mean. Oh, that was uh, hard to say. Uh, that 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 was probably when I was uh, learning how to program in Swing. There was some. Okay. Uh, I learn. I, I remember just that uh, I needed to think about uh, some tables and some comparisons and showing some rows and columns, but. That was still, uh, you know, the so like seminar project. Uh, but that was interesting for me to learn how the things work. Mm -hmm. and, and I like it. <laughs> That's what I can say. <laughs> Forgot to ask you, but where you studied? Uh, university, uh, Masaryk University uh, in Brno. Ah, okay. And this was uh, computer science, right? Yeah, computer science. Correct. And, and was it hard? Um. Yes, some some of the uh, lessons were a bit bit harder to 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 understand, but I I really like that I have some background and I just uh, time to time I'm um, like um, angry on me that at the time when I was on the university I was not uh, like forcing me to understand more things like like theory some more theory some more um, uh, I don't know, automat automatus and, and so on, uh, because it's handy to, to, to know those things. Yeah. Uh, the same with but me. Yeah, I like that. My problem was, uh, I also did C++ in Java at university and, uh, and I did, uh, interesting side projects. So my motivation, you know, just to learn dry theory was somehow limited. So, um, yeah. but, uh, right and now, you know, with, uh, I would really like, you know, to go over university again on to relearn the theory just for fun because uh yeah, yeah this this uh yeah but I think this is like like it is, you know. If you just yeah, I'm, uh, I'm... just learn the theory, uh it is uh, really dry and uh, if you start with programming it becomes it becomes very soon very exciting. So you see why why you need a stupid theory I can just you know write something reasonable without the theory behind. Yeah, I totally that, agree. No? That that was the same with me, yeah. and 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 yeah. and now it's really and would be handy to, to to know the things, and I needed to to search the web and and uh, yeah, trying to understand what's what's behind and why that's okay. happening. Okay. So so you told me that the first serious project was a warehouse company which used Java E and JBoss, and you wrote uh uh your your first your first line of code of of the first line of commercial code. Um, mm -hmm. Were you a freelancer or were you hired by the company? Yeah, I was. I was hired as, at the company. That was. That is like the small company here in Berno that is contracted from the uh, Austria company okay. that made that make uh, really like the whole whole whole, whole warehouse with the um, with the robots and and so on. And this is was the middleware project okay. uh, for logistic. Okay. Which, Which version of JBoss was it? You remember that roughly? I think that was we started at four point two and then moved to five. JBoss five. Oh, JBoss five. Okay, that's uh, pretty advanced. And they use already Java five. Yeah. So yeah. there were no no too much deployment as crypto. So it was more reasonable code. Uh, you mean uh no uh for for the for the JBoss five the JBoss five was still with those uh yeah all the the XML uh XML configuration and all every subsystem uh have has a, a different configuration different XML. So this, this yeah. is true, but if you implemented you know uh just a business apps with Java five. I I see. Yeah, that was already the annotations and yeah. yeah. No, 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 so many XML. Agree. Yeah, that was. Uh, in in fact, that was just nice that, that when I was uh, then uh, hearing from my colleagues uh, that was more experienced about all the XML and uh, pa parsing stuff and so on. That that I, I was I, I was not not in touch with that. Yeah, this is very good. Okay, and um, was the code base reasonable? Like you know, um, how many layers you have to touch? You know, to talk between the presentation and the database. You remember that? Uh, yeah, uh, 
in in general that the um we the implementation was done in that all the um all the configuration was da- done directly to database so the communication between layers was through database and then uh for the uh user interfa- interface that was used uh, uh like soap web services that there was some uh c sharp client okay. that was calling the middleware layer so yeah that, that that was no no many layers like for the communication there was uh, probably some messaging for some third party integration um yeah uh, that that way okay so uh, sounds pragmatic <laughs> yeah that, that was even you know if if you to uh like all the all the uh communication through the database time to time that start to be troubles with the migration uh when you need to migrate the, the database scheme and so on so yeah but that that was quite quite pragmatic i think yeah okay yeah. funny because uh i think last week i am uh, i completed a code review uh, for microservices and they had nine different data access object types, you know, and they did nothing mm-hmm. but wrapping the entity manager. And I asked them, you know, I cannot, you know, identify any added value. It's just, you know, an empty wrapper and why you did it, yeah. and they, they didn't knew. So it was actually interesting that back then you had already pragmatic design. And uh, yeah, the, yeah, that, that, that agree that from that perspective, that was pragmatic, but uh, in fact, the, uh, uh, I think the pain point of the project was the overusing of um, like uh, design pattern that there was a lot of patterns all over the code. So the communication layers was quite fine, but then uh, code was time to time to um, to abstract uh, without uh, without the need of of that abstraction. Yeah. yeah. So, this is yeah. another enterprise Java disease that uh, that we have lots of. Uh, mappers, this you know s- s- stuff, patterns which uh, do not solve any problems anymore because the problems were already solved by the pr- platform. So most of the design patterns just you know <clears throat> moved away from the code base to Java, so you don't we don't need them anymore. So yeah, I agree. And and uh, you enjoyed the project? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it because that was all all new things uh, for me. Uh, so I learned a lot. Um, yeah, so, but later on, I, I somehow decided that, uh, I, I would like to quit. I don't know, mostly because I wanted to get some, like, ex- different experience and I wanted to go, like, for some, to get some experience outside of the Czech Republic. So I went for internship for a year that was in PHP again. The, I, I work in web web shop like the standard PHP and jQuery as at the time that was kind of uh time that there was this uh crisis uh, that was not that not so easy to find a job for a junior at least I, 2000 yeah that was something like that 2007 2008 yeah you know? mm-hmm. exactly and and no, so 2009 in fact I think yeah. so uh yeah. How long did you spend at the uh, at the warehouse company? Two two years. Two years, and then you just you know stopped to say I would like to do something else, or you were fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I was. I I just I just wanted to to do something else. To for me, I wanted to go to some foreign country and were, got were... some different like perspective of the way of life. Or, okay, that, yeah. that's actually interesting. And and where you went? I was in Brazil. Oh, that this is great. So you spent one year in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That was that was nice. Uh from the uh like uh personal uh, personal perspective or, or or um that was that was great from from the like my computer science um background that that was just like um and nothing so so much interesting because I quit from Java. I I get got back to PHP. That was a small company doing websites, and there was like home bake mm-hmm. uh, administration system with all the baby 
I would say, um, baby DCCs of small companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was interesting for, for me, for sure. And was it for you, uh, as I said, a shock, you know, moving from Java 5 to PHP back or you enjoyed the experience or? I was, uh, meanwhile, I was still somehow like involved in PHP uh, side. I was doing small like web, uh, webs or friends or something, right? So I was still in touch with PHP and I've, uh, I know what, what the difference is. And there was no shock. I, I just expected that it will be different. Um, and I need to be more careful of doing things. And I, I will have troubles with changing name of variables and or, or so on. Okay. Well, I'm asking because, um, I, um, I organize uh, or I deliver workshops at the Munich airport, airhikes.com. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it. And from time to time, I get oh, actually every uh, every uh, season or every release i get uh, i get uh, php developers and mm -hmm, uh, and they really enjoy java e or microprofit they say this is actually incredible and mm -hmm. uh, and and and, and there was never an attendee who didn't like the experience so i'm really curious now why they like java e and microprofit that much uh, because of what you probably know java is sometimes you know Said or Java is said to be like s s slow and and not productive, which I don't understand. But uh, they say, okay, this is actually what you're showing us is incredibly productive, and they usually stick with Java. E. So the question is, why is that? I mean, why is the perception that Java is not productive and all or all PHP developers I met so far really like the Java experience? What 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 could be the reason actually? I see. Uh... For me, that that uh, I was I was uh, I have the experience from different times, you know. Uh, JBoss uh, as five that was like uh, that that I needed to to wait for I don't know two minutes uh, till the application was deployed and server was started. Uh, that was really different from from these days where you get uh, like just a few seconds to get all all the stuff be working or maybe. Even with with uh, with uh, lighter approaches like Quarkus, that's yeah. just a few milliseconds. So at the time, uh, that was uh, Java at, at least the enterprise Java was uh, like uh, a bit like heavy lifted, uh, like slower. Mm -hmm. That was productive, I think. But uh, that was time to time. It was really uh, really long time to to get things okay. working. That's interesting because back then I did a lot Java as well, and uh, what, what I what I always fight against was you know the the optional or superfluous uh, patterns which you mentioned, mm -hmm. and if you wrote you know thin words or uh, your you thin code, mm -hmm. I it see was, it was always fast actually. So I was always able you know to have a turn turnaround cycle around I would say five to ten seconds. Mm -hmm. and That's really nice. That yeah, that that probably like. Uh... Not so good design of the application. Agree, yeah. that was really and one big monolith with a lot of parts that needed to be deployed. So, and I, yeah. what, what I did, I uh, did some investigation. What it turned out back then is that the the um, most time was spent translating named queries into stored procedures in the database. So at the deployment. Mm -hmm. So this. Was, I see. Yeah, and um, if you didn't generate too much, you know, named queries, it was okay. But some. Uh, developers just generated all the name queries from the IDE, so they had hundreds of named queries, and it took forever, you know, to parse all the prepared statements. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, so, so you I, think I, that the the main pain points of Java E was the slow turnaround cycle yeah? time? To, for me, at yeah. that time, that was really ah, okay. the, the, that thing. Yeah, that's actually uh, good to know. So uh, now, now you know, you know from. First hand from PHP developer, what's the impression of Java years? So, so okay, I can agree. I wouldn't also. But it is like you know, ten ten years ago. Yeah, sure. So but uh, also wouldn't accept you know to wait two minutes until something happens on screen. So I, I ne never liked such project or that idea. Okay, after one year, you you, you went back from Brazil to Brno again. Mm -hmm. Agree. So why? I mean, Brazil uh, is Brazil not that nice as Brno, or why? You... <laughs> uh, that the. Main point that I was there uh, like for internship that was a uh, limited time, just one year. And I was there with my girlfriend, girlfriend. So uh, she was, she had the trouble to find her a job. So we just returned back 
And when I returned back, then I, I, uh, I was hired, uh, to Red Hat. So, and I am here from that time. So that's oh, interesting. So, uh, why years. you were hired, hired by Red Hat? I mean, how it happened? Uh, all right. I was not hired by, I'm sorry. That was a uh, wrong list that, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, searching for a, for a job and I had the Red Hat uh, office here was, uh, like growing and, and it still is growing. So that there was the offer and I, I just go to, to the Red Hat to, to ask if they, they can <laughs> hire me. Okay. So, and which, which position you applied for? Uh, I, I started as the quality engineer here. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was working, uh, I, I came to Red Hat at the time when, uh, Wildflies or the JBoss S7 was before launch. So I was like, uh, rewriting the uh, tests from the old version of JBoss AS to new new version where the old things change from from management perspective and class loading and all stuff all that. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, that that was that way. And then this is actually I, a great way for onboarding or to understand the code base, right? Just rewriting uh-huh. the tests. So if you start with that, you cannot you know damage too much. And you learn a lot. So actually, it's a very good idea to start a project or to, to you know, to understand a project starting with uh, writing tests, rewriting tests or migrating tests, right? Yeah, that, that was really nice. I, I learned really a lot uh, r- about the uh, Java enterprise uh, in general, about the patterns, uh, about the uh, yeah, internals of the uh, JBoss AS7 server, server. So yeah, that, that, was, that was great. And, uh, after that, I, I stay, I, I was still on the QE position, but I moved to, to be responsible for, uh, transaction, uh, transaction, this mm-hmm. subsystem. And was from it that your time, choice? Was it your choice or you? In fact, n- not. I was like moved there. Okay. <laughs> that, that I, I was no idea what the transaction is or okay. just that something abstract that uh, yeah. manages the consistency of the data, nothing else. But from that time, I start to learn, and I, I really started to enjoy the the, the, the topic and uh, all the things around from about the transaction, about the distributed systems. Yeah, uh, yeah. this this is what I can imagine. Now, from PHP to transactions, this is this this could be this this could be actually yeah. a shock, right? <laughs> <Because it's laughs> like, why the hell we need transactions? You know? Uh, yeah, agree exactly. Yeah, that that was that in in PHP. I was no. I, I was still not understanding what the, the reason the transaction yeah. exists, and yeah, yeah, the PHP was more or less uh, auto commit, right? Yeah, that, yeah, at least from from what we were doing, uh, maybe those things change yeah. nowadays. But yeah, agree. This that is was. what I remember uh, also um, around your times, so like two thousand one to two thousand three. So uh, before that, we used uh, so we built. Like content management system with just servlets, uh, Java beans or plain Java beans, so not like enterprise Java beans, like classes with getters and setters, and JDBC mm-hmm. and JDBC. So and uh, if you do this a little bit, so you recognize that if every interaction with a database is a commit, so if your server crashes, the data is not entirely stored in the database; it's like half stored in the database, and the first thing we we solved was uh, to tie, you know, the HTTP request to transaction. So we started, yeah. So we started. We we fetched the JDBC connections. We started the transaction. We we stored the connection in the request, and then uh, after this, we rolled back the transaction or committed the transaction. So we built a very small application server in a servlet filter. So and this is where I understood, you know, transactions are really convenient because you don't have to care about, you know, the it's just they were bound to request, and the, the problem was solved. And yeah. it, and then I heard, you know, lots of internets. We we don't need transactions, or, and and back then even there was a huge trend towards MySQL database without transaction support. And they say, okay, we don't need Java, we don't need you know transactions because we just we just you know a small e-commerce shop uh, which just uh, stores uh, something in in a database. Like, okay, but if you are an e-commerce shop, it is somehow you know important to uh to to have the payment and the order in in one logical unit 
and yeah, and, I see. Yeah, and this was this was like you know, f it's like why they don't have the problem, and then I recognized that they had the problem, but they didn't knew about that, right? Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, um, agree. <laughs> So, but uh, what you did exactly uh, with the transactions at Red Hat? You remember that? So, what was your 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 task exactly? Uh, at the at the time, I was on the on the uh, still a like quality engineer, mm -hmm. and then I moved to development after two years, I think, mm -hmm. or three. I'm not sure. And yeah, that that was like uh, uh, I started to um, like develop or to enhance the. Uh, code coverage for transaction man manager, mm -hmm. meaning working, uh, like starting to, to creating the test for, for pretending failures, network er uh, errors, uh, JVM crashes and these kind of things that, that, that's like can cause some in like integrity issues or troubles with for consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. then you learn a, a lot. So uh, I did uh, several tests for persistence, a similar test for persistence uh, layers, and I learned a lot how the persistence actually is working. So if you, if you are able, you know, to to write tests for, uh, like a system test for trend, for something mm -hmm. in your yeah, transaction for manager, so you really learn, you know, the oh. inner workings of of the stuff, right? For for sure, you are. You, you, that that's good starting point. Uh, and that was really good starting for, point for me because. I was somewhere in the middle. I, I was uh, able to understand uh, the application server and a bit uh, I have in the position of uh, uh, usual or, or normal user. And still I was looking into the code and communicating with developers what's happening and uh, if this is really what should be happening. Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, that was a nice learning curve. How many bugs nice. did you found? Well, I'm really not sure that that's, that's hard to say. <laughs> but what I, what I know that when I was moved to the, to the development position, there was still some of them open. So I have the option, uh, possible, I have the possibility to, to fix the bugs that I, uh, that I created before, uh, from the QA, QA position. Okay. <laughs> so I... <laughs> okay. And then, so, so you wrote the test. What was your next step in the, transaction uh, world of red hat yeah then then I, I i was like because of one of the developer from the uh, naira team uh, moved to to a different position here in red hat so i was asked uh, to, to join the the developers uh and yeah that i was i enjoyed the possibility and starting to work on on arena uh Narana project as a developer so you worked as Narayana as a, a quality assurance or, or tester, and then you moved uh -huh. to development phase, right? Exactly. So before yeah. we uh, start with the Narayana, so what is the relation between JBoss TM, Transaction Manager, Narayana, and Aryuna? I see. Uh, this is the, still the same thing. <laughs> this only the about the how the history went. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Arjuna was the like the company that was acquired by. Uh, Red Hat. I hope I'm 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 correct here. And yeah, this is the this is correct because this... we had already a, a a episode with Mark Little, so we. Talked mm -hmm, I think yeah yeah sure. Uh, then uh, then that's uh, <laughs> that's right. And that there was just the um, renaming of the project, and but I'm not sure why. But that was renamed for Arjuna to Narayana, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, JBoss TM, which is like JBoss Transaction Manager. It's just the Arjuna. It's it's the like this is the, the transaction manager which is used in the okay. uh, GBoss application server or Wi Fi is just Arjuna. So, and so, just... We, so we have one transaction manager which is shared by JBoss, Whitefly and Quarkus. Uh, good. Yeah, exactly. That's so yeah, and right, that's right. Narayana. So, and now we call it Narayana, but it also have different aliases or names. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so then exactly. you were a developer, you became developer. In which year was it? Uh, four years ago, 2015, I think. Okay. And for four years, you are working on, uh, on, on Narayana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, and, um, roughly how big is the team? We are, I th think three developers now. Cool. And, and, uh, so what were, I mean, 
if, if you if you look at the you know at the transaction space, this is like there are JTA, JTS, OTS specifications, and if you implement the the specification, you are basically done. So the question is, what you did for the four years, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> w- 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 yeah. W- w- uh, in fact, the, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. Uh, m- till I'm um, because the as well the uh, Nara is really major project. The main main thing what I'm doing still is uh, maintenance for of of that. There are time to time there is still some troubles issues and so on. Mm-hmm. With uh, the other thing that I I work on is so are the integration uh, issues and features as the Wi Fly. Uh, goes forward, there are some changes and that needs to be, to be done for, right, for, for the application server. As well, Narayana change, uh, or are, are tried to be integrated with, um, other systems or other, um, servers like Tomcat, uh, Spring, um, to, to, to support the standalone, uh, standalone deployment. So there are, uh, there, there was a force for, uh, to, to make those integrations smooth. Uh, and the next things what, what, uh, like we work on are uh, some like new, um, like the projects for, for the transaction handling, which is currently the um, transactions for a micro, micro profile or transaction handling, uh, which is, uh, uh, under name, uh, long running action, LRA. Mm-hmm. Um, so we built a specification and implementation for that. Uh, yeah, and for, for currently the, for example, my my project right now is the again uh, the integration stuff where I work on integration of uh, Wi-Fi transaction manager for uh, Kubernetes OpenShift as uh, as that's distribution uh, from Red Hat. Oh, that's uh, interesting stuff. So is it actually. The last four years you spent maintenance and integration with different frameworks and environments, right? Yeah, most most of that. Yeah. Now, so cool. So now I have a use case we can talk about to 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 get into Narayana. So uh, now imagine. So in the past, what we had to do from, from time to time, we had to let's say write transactional files. So what I would like to do is to implement something where I write a file to a disk. On rollback, the file disappears, and on commit, it is on the disk. So what I did before is like uh, I could, of course, um, rename the file. No, I write a temp file and then rename it, and uh, this works somehow well. It's not really concurrent, but um, I could actually use Narayana for that, right? Um, in fact, not <laughs> you. You can, but um, we have just uh, we the Narayana started the project. Uh, for a uh, file like the transaction for a file system, but it happens or we found that that's not so, that's pretty hard to do uh, yeah. in a really uh, atomic way. And that, that, that were no, no, like, uh, probably that, that's something from, from, I, I wasn't the part of the decision, but this, this project for, uh, transaction for file system was deprecated and no. currently it's not actively developed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't wouldn't like use Narayana to do this, but um, I could use Narayana for the transaction notification and processing, right? Mm, so, yeah, I, sure. I mean, uh, there is. Let's say we have just a servlet, and the ser- servlet starts a request, and uh, the request has to be bound to transactions. So I would imagine. So the first integration point of Narayana is like I say, hey Narayana, there is a new transaction going on, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, that's. How this would look like? So there is this like a Narayana builder dot new builder dot Narayana manager dot start transaction. So how how the bootstrap of Narayana would look like? Uh, for standalone application, yes, you need you have the uh, some con- you need to create some configuration, which is um, like now you are uh, at the at the at the space of some. Uh, internals of Narana, but you can just take what what's already prepared in our yeah. quick start. Yeah, how long is and the is, is the configuration roughly? It's so, some uh, it's some it's an XML file with uh, I don't know twenty lines or something. Okay. So this like, is the minimal configuration. So we need twenty lines of XML. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course you can go with uh, all the defaults which which are part of the code base, but normally we 
propose that you you should take those that configuration file as um, mm -hmm. as, a, as a basics. Uh, give me some examples of the of the entries in the configuration. So, what's the names of the configuration entries roughly? Um, so that, that, that there are things like uh, transaction timeout. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the then you there are the configuration of uh, some uh, internal classes of Narena which should be used for uh, transaction recover with for the recovery mm -hmm. when something wrong happens. Uh, then that there are some other other things with uh, yeah with about the, where the storage of the uh, transaction log should be should be placed. Uh, yeah, this, okay. This, these things. Okay. So the, uh, and then from Java code, Java perspective, what would be the first class I see, like Narayana Builder or Narayana <coughs> Factory, or what is it? <laughs> to be honest, uh, <laughs> the, I would need to, to to check really the uh, re real name that there is. Uh, Roughly, there is just the, pseudo code. Uh, so pseudo code. Yeah, yeah. You, you have some. Uh, you need to instantiate the Arjun, Arjuna, uh, which gives you the the transaction. Okay. Uh, in in fact, that when you there are like the transaction, the Narana transaction manager composed from the like two main parts. Which is transaction manager, which manages the transaction during the runtime, and the transaction recovery manager, which is the uh, like the different process or the different or started as a thread, uh, which is which manages troubles when trouble happens uh, either during the uh, the processing to face commit or when some J J uh, JVM crashes and uh, some uh, in the transaction are left in the uh, transaction log store. So at that time, you you need to to have this uh, running. So you yeah. need to start. You yeah. need to start uh, because uh, what can happen is uh, so what we have we have just a servlet. Let's say we have uh, an environment which only supports servlet. Let's say Tomcat without with servlets nothing else. So and what can happen that Tomcat itself crashes and if it starts again, we have to remember what we did and therefore we need two parts, right? So the recovery part will read somehow a, a file which. In the file, there is the transaction log, and in the transaction log, there is a clearly stated wait uh, we did here, begin or commit or whatever, right? Yeah, correct. Perfect. That's it. Uh, if, if exactly because the the, the top, Tomcat is like the, the this not, there is no direct uh, integration with the transaction manager, so you need to like start start it for you can uh, for for that can. Uh, check the um, recovery records and manage the transaction for you. Yeah, otherwise the Tomcat would forget, you know, to proceed with already running transaction in a database, for instance. So this, this will happen uh -huh. if you don't do this. Okay, so we have the Arjuna transaction manager, which is responsible for transactions, uh -huh. and we uh, create a transaction, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, correct. And the transaction has uh, XID or global ID? Yeah, the uh, the, here, here is that the uh, um, the transaction as a, as an object as a, some some ident a unique identifier which uh, which is needed for transaction manager to know uh, what the, what participants or what resources are part of the transaction. And this 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 ID is that is a, a global ID of the transaction or global transaction ID mm -hmm. and. Uh, XID, which is part of the uh, JTA specification and is def defined as, as uh, with with the definition of the, which that consists from two parts, uh, is the XID consists from the global uh, your global transaction ID and uh, like local transaction ID, which belongs to the resource which is part of the transaction. So that means. You have but, the, but in you our have, case, yeah. if we just have a servlet, the transaction will be always local. It means we have only one process participating in the in the transaction. So what it means, the global ID does matter, right? Uh, the global ID does matter. Really, here depends how you manage the transaction because uh, you have the if you uh, if you use the transaction manager for uh, for managing the transaction, then you. Use the Java Transaction API for managing it. That, mm -hmm. this, this is the like the nice abstraction for uh, for transactions. Mm -hmm. But with that, there is this the the implementation of the JTA is Transaction Manager with which provides you uh, with that API and and manages the global transaction. And part of the global transaction are some participants. 
Uh, if you don't want to use the transaction manager, you can go with just the local transactions, which are the, just the transactions uh, managed by the resource, meaning, for example, JDBC driver. That means you run just uh, set auto commit to false and then and run the connection dot commit and manages just that transaction for the database. You don't have this uh, standard API. Uh, you you are not uh, able, for example, in Wi-Fi to use the uh, annotation as transaction as transaction because that is all managed by a global transaction from transaction manager. But you are like with one less layer of the abstraction uh, to, to to say that. Okay. Then the local transactions don't have an identifier. Uh, in, if you if you would use the like the resource local transaction, then yeah, there is like uh, just some uh, uh, possibly there there has to be some identifier, but that will be just local for that uh, particular resource. So this is what um, I meant. What what I meant is if you have just you know local transactions or the if you said that the XID comprises two parts, the global part mm -hmm. and the and the local part. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, the global part could be just 42. It will constant, doesn't matter actually. And, and what only varies would be the local part, right? Uh, right. But still, there is the, if you, if you decide to start using the transaction manager, then the transaction manager needs the uh, uh, global transaction ID, yes. which, which, under that ID, then is enlisted then the resource, the yeah. participant, the, the, the yeah, that's right. The transaction manager always assumes the transaction is distributed. This is the point, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. If, yeah. if I don't yeah. need a distribution, exactly. then I can use to just the local part, like I just talking straight to JDBC and then mm -hmm. uh, the transaction manager is not involved. Exactly. Okay. But from Perfect. that, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So just, just I wanted to say that if you use the uh, uh, transaction manager, uh, you still have that, uh, like the JTA abstraction, which makes you, uh, working with the transaction, uh, like the, the, the life for the developers is easier. And the transaction manager tries to not, uh, to, to push any big bar burden for the, from the, like the performance or, or, or for performance perspective. If there is still just one, uh, resource or like the, if you have the uh, transaction manager managing just the database, then the transaction manager just manages the thing via the JD, JTA as the API and then just do the, uh, just does the same thing as you did, uh, uh manually when you run it, uh, when you run, to man uh, when you run it uh, as, as local transaction. So the only thing which is done is just the commit. Um, but yeah, but that's uh, run. This all, is optimization. Means if you have just one participant, we don't need two phases because we just happy with commit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's right. Correct. So and now, uh, now we uh, we are in the servlet, and I am in the request. And I would let's say you mentioned already JPA, making a little bit more interesting. We would like to write uh, the metadata to a JPA entity, and the content of the file. To a file store, which is we did it actually in a project a few years ago with a CAD, so computer aided design like files, mm -hmm. files. We did it actually that, and uh, let's say I would like to implement it without Java on Tomcat. So I would just you know say Arjuna, give me a transaction. I would provide you know the timeouts and all the default configuration in mm -hmm. XML, and then I get back transaction context or a transaction object, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I can say begin. Yeah, correct. And then I get the uh, global ID with the two parts, which is just abstracted mm -hmm. in, a, in an object. So I just don't see the numbers or the characters. I just have an instance. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, then I can, and then I can store, or I will have to store the instance in the thread local or in the HTTP request if I have access to the HTTP request. Mm -hmm. That's an attribute, right? Uh, right. That's the, for the transaction manager perspective, the Transaction objects is uh, like bound to the uh, thread. That's mm -hmm. thread local. Mm -hmm. uh, that that context that you are talking uh, about, yeah, that could be passed uh, in the, the in the session and then get the transaction manager like suspend the transaction and resume the same ID later on. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, 
So what it means, uh, the Arjuna will store Arjuna will store the context per default in a thread. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. exactly. so this is even more convenient. So this is already done. So let's say the thread local part already happens for me by Arjuna. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's and, that's what transaction management. So and in the request we have uh, imagine we have like file upload with the metadata in headers, let's say, and the stream goes to my file. So first I will uh, let's say I will. I will try, you know, to to store the metadata with the entity manager. So the entity manager has an internal API, as far as I remember, is like enlist in transaction or something. This is like the mm -hmm. API, right? Uh, I I'm not sure about the entity manager, but yeah, yeah, that that's needed. The the enlist enlist part is for the for the uh, that's required or that's part of the uh, of the JTA specification. So yeah, go ahead. So what I will have to do is to, is to to tell Eclipse Link, let's say, or Hibernate, mm -hmm. um, you are participating in the transaction right now, and I will pass the context to this resource, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. So, and and the, the resource will now the question is, okay, wh when the entity manager will fetch the database connection and start, you know, and and start the transaction is up to entity manager, right? So Arjuna mm -hmm. will, has nothing no. to do with. No. So, no, so no. The, the, and if the entity manager or JPA is prop, uh, is properly implemented, it will design at one point of time depending on optimistic or pessimistic logs, whatever we did. Mm -hmm. Now I need to you know the uh, to talk to the database, and will fetch uh, a connection. And uh, even more important, what will probably happen is that the entity manager would reserve a unit of work, is like you know hash map with. Uh, with the data which belongs to the context, right? This is what I would expect from Hibernate or Eclipse Link. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we have several such transactions going on in parallel, I would suspect to have, you know, s several parallel units of works which are independent from each other. This is the point of transactions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what what, uh, what Narana needs is uh, to have the possibility to, like, to... Um, now, just just from the transaction perspective, if you don't mind, I just to to just quick note here. Uh, here it really depends if the JDBC uh, uh, JDBC JDBC driver uh, supports the XA transaction or does not support the XA transactions. If uh, there is the support of the XA transaction, then the this uh, this uh, JDBC driver can be part of the two phase commit and multiple resources could be part of the transaction. If that's not that's not correct, that's not right, then that uh, uh, JDBC like JDBC or the JDBC connection can be just the one participant in the transaction. If we are here with the as you said with just this uh, JDBC driver, there is just one uh, one participant, then that's everything is fine. And uh, still the the Narana needs needs to have the possibility to to touch uh, touch the connect touch the JDBC connection to be capable to call the commit. But yeah, that is all the uh, all the maintenance of the of the data is managed by, by entity manager. And just yeah. What it means is if you would implement this by ourselves, um, depending on the uh, JDBC driver type, if the uh, JDBC dri driver is not XA compliant or not XA capable, then it mm -hmm. would be enough that the entity manager says commit. But if the driver is XA compliant driver, we will have to expose the driver to uh, Arjuna or Narayana because uh, we will have to match the XID. So if there is an internal communication between the transaction manager and the driver, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. Right. So this is handled by the application server behind the scenes, but if we mm -hmm. don't have the application yeah. server, we will have to implement this by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the mo more in 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 interesting part now, now we come to our my file. So let's say I play a little bit with, uh, or just do very, very simple, like uh, just Java I.O., not, not NIO, just no memory buffers. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, simple, simplistic implementation. So what I would do naively is I would store the stream in a file create temp, in a temporary file. And then uh, if Narayana, no, so, sorry, Nar uh, Narayana will have to tell me the transaction started right now. With the transaction start, I would create a temporary file and uh, stream the content to this file and wait what happens, right? Uh, right. Uh, 
um, um, from the from, from yeah that that's correct. Just uh, what you will probably what you will need to to create is uh, to 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 implement that uh, file like uh, in file file stuff uh, being uh, like um, the the participant of the transaction. So you need to uh, you need to provide the to, to follow the API which which is defined with the with the Narana or yeah with the Narana host how hope now. Uh, so then yeah you will you are like set okay now the transaction begins and yeah that now you should commit or yeah exactly. Yeah what I forgot is my temporary file will not work exactly because what you said earlier uh Nariana is able to suspend transactions. So what I want to do is probably it will be wiser to use the global transaction ID as a file name. Mm -hmm. Let's say it would be doable. Yeah. But because then we can proceed, you know. If our server yeah. dies, uh, we know okay this uh, file yeah. already exists and we can proceed. If I would just use temporary file name, there will be no correlation between the global ID and my file, right? Yeah, exactly. The, in fact that's what what you you need to uh, implement this like the XA resource API mm -hmm. and yeah exactly because the Narana during the commit you will or during the information from the from the transaction manager you will get this uh this ID of transaction which you as the implementer of the file system uh resource you need to you need to manage on your on, on your own that yeah. that you need to match that file to that uh transaction ID. And in the case of application servers, we would probably use JCA connector, which would expose exactly yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's very simple and already implemented that. I think the name is connectors with the Z as an example. So it is every, you have to write three files. But let's say uh -huh. we, yeah, don't, we, we don't have JCA because I'm more curious about the Nariana stuff. So <laughs> we will have to use, you know, we will have to use the proprietary uh, Nariana um Classes which, in fact, will look like XA because they have to implement the XA. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, protocol. exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay so the f we have now two phase commit because we have two participants. We could actually uh, simplify that, but for now we have two participants one my file connector, and the other one is the, the JPA. So, mm -hmm. what, it, what it means is in the, um, in the uh, two phases means we have uh, begin, prepare for commit, on commit. And, um, uh, right? And no, uh, if if you don't mind, I I will try to just quickly summarize the process. Uh, yes, on, sure. Maybe okay. so. Uh, the transaction transaction starts with the like the, I know transaction dot begin, mm -hmm. and at at the time there is uh, everything was happening is uh, processing in memory, mm -hmm. uh, like from the transaction perspective, you know. Yes. And uh, on a transaction manager perspective. Or, or, or in temporary file is also okay, right? Because I don't like uh, to, to write two gigs of file to a memory. I could write to a temporary file. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's uh, then uh, about how the resource manages that, that yes. thing. Mm -hmm. But agree, yeah. That's that's on a, depends on the on the on the resource how how it does. If I take just the example for the database, then after the begin, the the transaction, the global transaction was started. And then some participants resources can be enlisted into that global transaction. In your case, that's uh, the JDBC and that file uh, file system resource. And the entity uh, manager example. unit of work, right? Uh, yeah, or mm -hmm. entity manager. Yeah, agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But that's the the uh, the uh, the work that some uh, some uh, entity persists and so on. Are currently managed by entity manager and depends on the entity manager how it does. But we are still somehow uh, in the in the in the uh, global transaction processing. Then, then at the end, when you know that uh, all the all the work that should be um, managed as a atomic unit of work, which the, that should be considered as consistent, uh, the data uh, changes. Uh, finishes, then you call transaction manager or transaction dot commit, and at the time it's up to transaction manager to process the consistent uh, consistent commit for all the work that's done. Transaction manager has uh, implemented the 
PTA does this with two-phase commit protocol. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, if you, if you, if you, uh, told that there is this entity manager, then, uh, that really depends and this depends on Hibernate. I am not so, uh, familiar with that, but, uh, some parts of the, I don't know if there was some, uh, insertion to database updates to, to database. Some parts was maybe already, uh, sent to the database. Maybe not, but there will be, uh, for sure there needs to, we cleaned all the, all the memory, uh, stuff or the, or the, or the memory, all the changes that, that's currently, uh, uh, saved just in the memory by entity manager to, to be flushed to the database by sending the JDBC, uh, executed update, some insert, up, uh, insertion and so on. For, for database would really save those changes into the, that internal storage. This is usually done before two phase commit pro- protocol starts and uh, the entity manager uh, uh, like uh, register itself to the uh, JTA uh, to be to be part of the JTA synchronization uh, like calls which is which can be which can be observed as the transaction is started to be finished so that's that's before completion call before two phase commit starts and then after uh, completion, when when the transaction was already finished, and you know if there the outcome was with commit or or rollback. So at that time, before two phase commit starts, the entity manager has to uh, has to flush flush all the uh, uh, in memory state to to the database, and then two phase commit starts where the uh, really here just transaction manager uses uh the XA protocol to communicate with the uh with the resources which is uh done uh, like usually via XA resource dot prepare uh, XA resource XA resource dot uh commit calls and uh when the prepare when the prepare on the resource what I I if I say it for on the JDBC is called then trans then the um J- database, uh, if, if agreed that the transaction is okay and prepare is, is, the, is processed correctly, then at that time database promises that, uh, the, it really finishes with the commit, uh, that, that the transaction manager asks for the database or to database, then ask your, uh, file system, uh, file system resource. And if the uh, output of both calls are okay, we are ready to finish with the commit. The transaction manager moves to the commit phase and calls the xaresource.commit on both of your resources. And at the time when the commit is called, then uh, transaction manager can finish all transaction with the success and call after that the synchronization call. And yeah, and the transaction finishes. And then the, uh, the, for example, in the case of TJB or whatever, the user is informed or the, the call is written back to the, to the code of application server, uh, with, with success. Yeah, exactly. So, um, in our servlet, in our servlet filter, we just do begin and commit or rollback. And what you describe right now, is, is is controlled by Narayana. So the whole, mm-hmm. you know, uh, begin, uh, prepare, and uh, commit is the protocol which is controlled by Narayana. And mm-hmm. uh, all these states are stored in a transaction log so that if we crash, Narayana could reread the log consistently and proceed and recover from the crash. Uh, right. That the, uh, the transaction log is uh, filled at the time to prepare uh, prepare phase finishes or, well, okay, uh, to, to simplify this, it's so, so if I, if I would say that, uh, that easily we, we can say that, uh, if some crash or trouble happens mm-hmm. before the whole prepare phase finishes, then, uh, it's expected that all the resources will be rolled back. Mm-hmm. If the prepare phase, uh, finishes with success, then really the, there are the logs stored in the Narana, uh, Narana log store or, or, uh, and 
uh, even after some crash or trouble, the transaction manager of Narayana will commit all the resources uh, at the end uh, after yeah. some time. Because in two-phase commit, the prepare fa phase is more or less like the commit phase in, in, in local transactions, right? So it means if you uh, have a local transaction and the server crashes after begin, no one cares about because there was no commit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 yeah. From that perspective, you are absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. like right. Yeah. And uh, so we have begin and commit at the servlet level, and uh, just what you said very quickly is uh, uh, if we have the entity manager, we just have you no know, uh, JPA entities, and uh, we change the state. Um, so first, the um, if we have two phase commit, then Narayana will tell the entity manager begin at the at the begin. The entity manager will create the unit of work. It's like internal set internal transactional cache. This is how, how we uh -huh. can see this, and yeah. it will manage uh, all dirty, new, freshly created and deleted entities. And then, at one uh -huh. point of time, there will uh, the prepare phase will kick in, and in the prepare phase, the entity manager will flush whatever it has in the transactional cache straight to the database without caring about co begins or commits because begin commit uh, is is uh, is uh, managed by uh, narayana because we have two phase commit xa jdbc driver uh, i i agree just i would say that i would not mix the prepare um, like word here or prepare term the flush flush to the the database has to happen before the prepare starts so, uh, so and, that, and what's 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 the call what's the xa call for the for this phase so uh, this is not no no XA call. This is uh, for JTA perspective. It's done via synchronization point. JTA defines the uh, synchronization uh, like object, mm -hmm. and you can register the synchronization for the particular transaction. But what's the method so, in the synchronization interface? It's called uh, before completion. Before completion, exactly. So Narayana will call indirectly before completion, mm -hmm. and, and this yeah. before completion. Uh, will flush uh, the transactional cache to a database. By the way, you can always do that. So you can invoke flush as 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 often uh -huh. as you like, yeah. and you will just flush the dirty state to a database. And 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 this is uh, you know the convenience of transactions because uh -huh. yeah. commit yeah. Didn't, ne didn't happen yet. So this is like so the before completion is invoked with session synchronization interface by Narayana, uh -huh. and um, yeah, and this before phase is. Uh, uh, tied to XA protocol. This is why you didn't want it you know, to to tie it to mm -hmm. prepare. So exactly. and, and in my uh, in my file system, I don't have session synchronization. So I will just expose you something else, which uh, we will have to write an adapter integration. Would be actually your job right now. And uh, and uh, the uh, Narayana will will invoke a hook in my file system. And what I will do is, I would rename a file. With the global identifier, probably to file with uh, the business name what I wanted to have. Let's say, let's call mm -hmm. it uh, myhouse.cad. And but I will still create a lock, and I I I will have an exclusive lock to a file, so no one else will will be able to change the file. This mm -hmm. is what I will do, that's, right? That's that's at the time when the prepare is called. At the time when the uh, XA resource dot prepare is called, which is implemented by your resource, mm -hmm. and you receive this call with the prepare with the UID of the transaction which is going to be prepared. Then yes, that's that's what you do. You create the log, for yeah. nobody else can uh, touch it. Yeah, and then uh, I'm just waiting until Nariana tells me you are done. This will be the global commit is done, right? Commit or rollback. Now it depends what will yeah. be the uh, outcome of the transaction. Yeah, on rollback, yeah. I will have to delete the file and uh, release mm -hmm. the log, and then commit, I will just release the log, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So you see what we will have to do, you know, if you don't like to have the application service, you will have to implement this correctly by ourselves. And the, the problem is, of course, in projects, everything works in a single thread, and under pressure, everything breaks down. So that's what I see uh, that all, you know, own implementations of persistence or uh, whatever they, I just don't, don't work anymore because the subtle differences when you release what is uh, is a little bit hard to implement, right? Mm, I see. Cool. Uh, so uh, there, there's a one, one one minor part. What we could do, we could ac actually optimize the whole thing, and we can tell Narayana 
that the uh, local fi uh, that my local file system uh, is the last should be called uh, as the last transaction and to emulate emulate two phase commit so we can uh, mm -hmm. optimize the whole thing that uh, you will only call to my file system commit and this will simplify my implementation and speed up a little bit the performance right yeah correct there is possible that like that there is the optimiz optimization that you won't call the whole the prepare uh, to all the resources but you uh, switch the order of the resources in, in the in the like the, the commit protocol and you will define one of the resources to be uh to be uh, not and uh, not taken as the xa resource but as the standard resource and that way that resource will be just committed not uh not not called with prepare and commit yeah okay that's yeah that Perfect. So we, we covered actually uh, the uh, custom implementation with uh, Narayana. And by the way, if someone tries Quarkus and you cre uh, and you uh, decide to use the Narayana JTA extension, you will see that if you start Quarkus, uh, it will create a folder in your file system, and this folder will mm -hmm. will contain you know the transaction log, the the state we exactly. were talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah. exactly. You need you need to have the some place where the uh, log store is or the Narayana store store is saved because it uh, needs to find out the way where the uh, information about the uh, prepared transactions are placed. Yeah. Narayana currently uh, like supports to save the log at uh, either to to the file system or to database. Yeah, which but is reasonable to, because uh, in. Uh... Some of my projects you know, they ran, um, they, uh, they um, deployed application servers to a cluster and on a crash, they forgot to migrate the transaction files, which would be you know, part of the recovery procedure. So what you will actually have to do is to restart the application server. If you restart the application server on different node, you will have to copy the, the uh, transaction files, right? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. And, if you, if, and if you store the transaction uh, log in a, in a database, um, it could be even I don't know whether it works, but an open shift it could be even etcd. Yeah, that's that's what something what what like we are currently thinking on. But etcd is not the great place because all the configurations uh, for Kubernetes yeah. is not there. So what is already now, there? You know, if you have a simple cluster, we could use etcd yeah, to store it. But you can, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's yeah. possible, or could be. So I'm I'm not sure if etcd because currently Narana. Provides just JDBC connector, so the ETCD would need to have some JDBC implementation, which I'm not sure if if correct if it's right or if if it is uh, available or not. But if, whatever JDBC uh, um, API, uh, uh, whatever database which implements JDBC can be used. So and now we do the same without Tomcat and just with Whitefly. So we have the same servlet. And instead of uh, the servlet filter, we will invoke one single EJB, which is marked at stateless. And this in stateless default behavior already starts and commits transactions and on the runtime exceptions and will roll back the current transaction. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. assume behind, behind the scenes what happened is if you inject the EJB to a servlet, what gets injected is the proxy of the EJB. And because at stateless says uh, transaction required, it means Required means if there is no, n not a transaction available, a new transaction is going to be started. And if there is already an active transaction, it's going to be reused. In our case, the server didn't start a transaction. Mm -hmm. So uh, the proxy will tell a kind of aspect, a transaction aspect, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that there is no transaction going on. And then the EGB will go to JTA, I assume, Java Transaction API, and say, uh, start transaction or begin. At, uh, begin. Start exactly. begin. Mm -hmm. And this uh, begin does exactly the same what we discussed before. So the difference is the JTA is a API which is standardized and mm -hmm. uh, the implementation would be a Narayana or Arjuna class mm -hmm. and the same or, will happen yeah. behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's uh, yeah exactly that. That's so that Wi-Fi, I Wi-Fi just uh, prepare or configure transaction manager in a way that uh, depends on the on, on your configuration, which part of the Wi-Fi, start the transaction manager, start the recovery manager, 
uh, defines the where the store, where the storage of lock uh, of the transaction lock will be placed. And then, yeah, then there is this EJB layer which will uh, use this JTA uh, API to begin the transaction when the when it it when there is the uh, like trans uh, annotation required being placed uh, at the method. Yeah, cool. And um, if you would say we don't like EJBs, so by the way, the EJB would be just a single class with a single annotation and stateless, no interfaces, nothing in between. So this is actually the great story. But now let's say let's say I don't like the at stateless annotation. I would like to use instead of stateless request scoped at transactional. Uh, then a CDI proxy is going to be injected, and I assume behind the scenes the uh, the um, CDI aspect will call the same JTA uh, transaction manager again, right? Yeah, exactly. There is just uh, from the perspective of the application server, there is just the the the, the all things are uh, bound to JNDI, so you can either leave the CDI or EJB to find out the transaction manager or the transaction and that, that's bound to the, at the uh, and in the J, JNDI, or you can as well uh, in your server take an uh, out from uh, JNDI binding the transaction manager and call the begin on your own. Yeah. And uh, as, if you don't like that, so you could say, I would like to uh, do it by myself, which in my eyes doesn't make a lot of sense, but you could still inject the user transaction at the resource user transaction and control it by yourself. But then you will have to catch, you know, a lot of exceptions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's right. Yeah. So, and the that, user that... transaction will call exactly the same interface. So uh, in if you are injecting a transactional CDI bin or EJB or using user transaction behind the scenes is exactly the same code. So once Yeah, that's call... exactly the same code. I, from my perspective, this is the a little bit trouble of JTA because you can see there the like multiple things which seems to, to do different things, but they in fact are implemented in the same way. You have the transaction, you have the user transaction, and you have the transaction manager. And then uh, the the like the point is that the user should use just user transaction, and uh, the other objects are uh, should be available only for the application server or are expected to be used by application servers. So that is what you're talking about. Is the the method like entity manager get entity transaction? I think is the method name. So it shouldn't be used directly in code. I use it for in tests, for instance, but you shouldn't call it uh, in production code. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's uh, about the from the perspective how the uh, application programmer should use like uh, Java EE. Now I I recommend how the uh, Java transaction API is is created or what what is offered to because uh, GTA. If you take a look at, at the API uh, at, at, at the documentation. Provides the uh, provides the classes which the, the, you can see that there is the user transaction and the class or interface for transaction manager. So that's not directly and I think that it's not directly comprehensive or understandable. Uh, what 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 class should be used uh, in which uh, circumstance? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Yeah, so what it actually means is with CDI or EJBs, you can greatly simplify your code, right? So if you focus on business, you only have to add a one annotation. And exactly. the whole that's, machinery that's... happens behind the scenes and the performance is superb. And now, mm -hmm. um, what I see a lot, and uh, like the developers say, transactions are slow. <laughs> and then uh, they start you know, to optimize things by, for instance, marking some methods as... Uh, as never, so uh, please don't start a transaction and the others are transactional. And um, this does not make a lot of sense because what, what it actually means is if you say never, the uh, transaction manager will really have to check whether there is no transaction going on. And mm -hmm. uh, if if there is no transaction involved, it's actually faster to go with the default, right? Yeah, agree that, that in, in that case, just I would um, say that it's not the transaction manager who is managing Who's checking those annotations because those annotations are like defined by the EJB specification or CDI spec or CDI extension. So that will be the, but yeah, there, there is needs to be somehow checked if the transactions is really started, 
And if not, then it needs to be suspended or restarted. And if you mix that, uh, like calling, especially if you like using without the, without the need, if you're using the, um, um, EJBs, which are like, uh, stopping and starting the stuff, like suspending and resuming st- uh, transaction, um, then yeah, that, that's, that's trouble happens. And what I also see a lot is like, um, so in my project, we have like a you know, boundary layer, which uh, where I always start the transactions because then the use case, every use case is one-to-one related to a transaction, which is always a good idea because you think from the business perspective about that, either something happens or not. So if, the, if, if either you order something or not. And what developers try to do sometimes is to say there is no transaction started in a boundary layer and they start transactions later. And the problem is then we have almost no the auto commit situation where uh, every method starts a new transaction. And this is a lot of slower, but if, because for each method, the whole machinery we talk about has, has to happen. And, um, and, we, uh, and it is actually impossible to perform the whole use case in one transaction, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, the last thing, which is interesting, in some projects, they deactivate the transactions completely and try uh, to say, because we're just reading from the database. But if you think about uh-huh. this, if you just read from a database, you, 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 you have to think about the isolation. So what you are reading? Would you like to read you know, the committed stuff, uh, the, uh, you know, the snapshot of a database? What you would like to read? And in one project, this was years ago, uh, they deactivated the transactions. And what happened was the... Uh, the reads were a way slower because it turned out that the database for each interaction requires a small transaction. And instead of one transaction, mm-hmm. the database started to you know hundreds and thousands of transactions, which was a huge performance impact. Yeah, yeah, that, that's for sure that, that, that this, is, this, this is something that you need to, to consider. Maybe if you would somehow like define that there should not be like use transaction at all, even in the database, you know, that... Uh, then could be handled in, in, in a way, but that will be quite dangerous because you are you are really not sure about the consistency. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that, that, what, that's what it. Means, because, you will have to swap, you know, in MySQL, you will have to use the non-transactional engine. I forgot mm-hmm. what the name is. Yeah. Uh, uh, then it could work, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And and yeah, agree that the database itself needs to uh, manage the transactions so that will start for the, each request, the transaction, and, and yeah, that, that overhead happens. So I, I would say, to summarize this, I think if you if you are writing um, business-like applications where there is a use case and there is somehow how some kind of store, let's say database or whatever is persistent, you always need at least a concept of local transaction, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, I really agree with that. Because without that, uh, this is like you know, uh, trying you know to 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 the analogy would be you know to store state like back then with. Do you remember the remote container managed persistence beans? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, and, I remember yeah, that. The problem was there was a remote interface to to an entity, and the entity was like a row in a table, and the trouble was every setter was a remote call. So you were not able, you know, to store in one transaction, one row in a table because every setter you could partially, this was like, you know, not storing a row in the table is more like storing a column in the table in, in one action, which uh, if you are lucky, it worked, but if you were not lucky, the, 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 the state were partially there, right? Mm, uh, uh, maybe I have just one, one, one point on this, uh, that uh, I agree with this said just... Uh, Again, that really depends on if you decide to not, you won't be using the uh, database that support the transactions and you will start using some NoSQL, which uh, like do not offer you some uh, API for transaction, then you just need to think differently. You know, you need to, to, to store the document directly as the whole and Manage something in in uh, our uh, So it really depends on what you really want. I, I, I would say you will have to do the same. So if you have, to, for instance, no SQL database with a document, what you will have to do is you will have to know that every interaction with the system is actually a transaction. So you will have to store in this call whatever makes sense for the use case. 
Agree. And, and that, that's something maybe you will need to handle more things, uh, on the, like the, the in your business card because you, and, that, that nice yeah. thing was, what is the, 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 the transaction gives you like nice tool for, uh, not thinking about the consistency, about the, uh, you know, the uh, updates, uh, about the concurrent updates on the same record, um, uh, that, that you would need otherwise. Yeah. I would say if you ignore transactions in one point of time, you will you will find yourself implemented your own transaction manager somehow. Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, I think there is some. Uh, I, I I don't know if you um, know the that there was some nice note on the Twitter from Martin Platman. Uh, that's the guy who, who talks about the transactions and distributed systems, and he said exactly this. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the link to the note, so I was not. Uh, yeah, this, this I, I, will, to show I will try to find it later on. Uh, like, then I will send it. And now, the most important thing is what we talk about now has nothing to do with Java. So, if we would write something in Node.js, Rust, Go, or whatever, it will be exactly the same procedure. So, let's say we would write a Node.js system which which talks to a Postgres database and would like to write consistently a file. We will have exactly the same conversation with JavaScript methods, right? So there is there is nothing specific in Java e what we talk about. So this XA is like a protocol, a uh, known protocol for distributed transaction coordination, and you can implement it whatever programming language you like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree. Uh, just I am to be honest, I'm not no not I'm not um, not following uh, what is the state of the transaction management in JavaScript or Node.js world or in Go uh, world. So this is something that I'm I'm uh, hard I'm, I'm I have trouble to to comment on. Oh sure. Just what, what I meant is uh, if there is nothing there, we will have to implement the, the same thing we started with. Mm -hmm. We will have to intercept the HTTP call and do it by ourselves. Exactly what we discussed mm -hmm. in the first part. Yeah, the only thing that could be like the potential, let's say, uh, the problematic is the now the the hype of the like the microservice and things mm -hmm. where you have you you split your uh, application to multiple parts and now you have trouble that there would be a multiple uh, uh, simple simple application trying to somehow join. This global transaction mm -hmm. for uh, uh, for how it's done with the consist consistency, and now this this is the problematic because uh, this these uh, uh, services could uh, could crash independently. Everything is like coupled by that by the fact that all the uh, all the changes wait for for the transaction being committed. So when then when this is the point where the multiple remote calls and uh, uh, and the, uh, um, the the simple the microservice architecture is used, then the then you need to think twice. Yeah. What is your what is what you want to get? And what, but this, what will this is like a self-made problem, right? So if someone decides to split one app into multiple microservices, it is obvious that there is no more, so local transactions do not work anymore. And uh, two-phase commit is also problematic because you will have to implement mm -hmm. the protocol we talk about between microservices. So in mm -hmm. my eyes, the only thing which works is like, okay, our decision was not to use transactions. Then we have, let's say, one facade microservice or, or, or composite microservice has to talk to multiple microservices. So then we have to resolve the problem by introducing new use cases. So what it means is if I say order and it failed, then the uh, counter use case, I think it's called Zaga pattern, or we need a compensative transaction to tell, hey, mm -hmm. uh, we send an email to a customer that the customer should send us, you know, the, uh, the, the package back or something like this. So we'll need, you know, not a undo rather than a new use case, which uh, tries to make the system consistent again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this, this is the yeah, uh, I like the possible pattern that you can use if you decide to go with in in with microservice architecture. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, where people can find you on the internet? So, give me some links to your blog, Twitter, whatever you have. Uh, yeah, uh, I I use the the uh, the Twitter uh, with the underscore T H A L D A. <laughs> okay. And. 
that's mostly where you can find me. I have the blog, but I'm not um, uh, active on that so so much. So more more, I I am now publishing articles more on the Narayana blog blog, which is jbostm dot blog blog. Okay. Both.com. Yeah, perfect. And you sent me the links to the Twitter and whatever you have with the resources. I will publish everything to on the show notes. Okay, I will, I will get you some some of them and send you. So thank you a lot. It's already a pleasure to discuss with you. You know the whole transaction stuff from bottom up, top down. I think this is now a little bit more clarity how Java or application I, service works behind the scenes. I, I hope that I I, I I clarify a little bit things. Yeah. And thank you for having me. That yeah. was a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, see you next time. So we can just uh, redo that in a few months and just talk specifically about, you know, one single concept without the introduction. Now we all know that you love Java and transactions. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.